Hi, today we're going to be having a look at frames of reference and relativity. Specifically, I'll be talking about absolute motion and what Newton thought about motion. Then I'll go forward and talk about frame of reference, define what they are, talk about inertial and non-inertial frames of references. I'll move on to relativity as it was originally postulated by Galileo, and then talk about what Einstein said in his special relativity, and then we'll have a look at some of the consequences of special relativity. So just to start off, a frame of reference. The definition of a frame of reference is it refers to a provided set of axes from which an observer can measure the position and the motion of all points in the system, as well as the orientation of objects. What that means basically is that a frame of reference is a coordinate system with respect to which you can make measurements. For example, the ground is a frame of reference, a car is a frame of reference. There are actually two types of frames of reference that we are interested in, inertia and non-inertia. So we have inertial frames of references. In, in inertial frames of reference, Newton's law of inertia holds. And these are basically stationary or moving with constant velocity. And the other one is non-inertial. And these are basically accelerating frames of references. So they are accelerating. The reason why we distinguish between the two things is because you cannot do an experiment completely within a frame of reference to figure out if he is stationary or if he is moving with constant velocity. And the reason is because the laws of physics are the same for a frame of reference that is stationary and for one that is moving with constant velocity. In fact, if you think about it, absolute motion as itself doesn't really exist because to determine if I am moving, what I need to do is I need to pick a frame of reference and see if I have moved with respect to that. For example, if I want to see if I'm moving, I'll pick a tree. And if my position with respect to the tree has changed, it means that I'm actually moving. So I need a frame of reference. For absolute motion to exist, we would need an absolute frame of reference. Now, if ether existed, it could be considered an absolute frame of reference. But as was explained in the previous video, the michelson molly experiment, after that, the theory of ether was rejected. So then we come up to relativity. Now, relativity as a, as a principle was first formally stated by Galileo and was then included in Newton's mechanics. Henry Poincare then added to it, and then later on, Einstein came up with his special relativity. So relativity has actually been there for a long time, um, even though you know, Einstein is sort of um, given the credit for making it more prominent, it has existed for a long time. Now, what actually happened was, in 1905, Einstein proposed that the speed of flight is a constant and it is independent of the speed of the source or the observer. So what that means is light will always travel at the speed of light. doesn't matter if you're going towards it, doesn't matter if you're going away from it, light will always travel at the speed of light. So, you know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't sound like something very profound, but then if you actually look, have a look at some of the consequences, we see that it has, you know, really big implications. What do I mean by that? Let's have a look at some examples, right? So if, if speed becomes absolute, you know, light, if, all, if light always travels at the speed of light, and the formula for speed is this, speed equals distance divided by time. Alright? If speed is absolute, then distance and time become relative. What I mean by that is, one meter for me will not be the same as one meter for you. And, you know, one second for me will actually not be the same as one second for you. How does that actually work? Alright, so we'll have a look at a thought experiment that sort of explains this. Imagine that there's a spaceship, and you are sitting in the spaceship. And there's a light clock. So there's a photon of light that goes up and comes down. Every time it does that, it's one second. So it goes, come, goes up, comes back down, one tick. Goes up, comes back down, two ticks. Goes up, comes back down, three ticks, means three seconds. 
Now I have another observer who is standing here outside. This guy sees this spacecraft moving towards the side. So this guy sees this spacecraft as this. 